Hello everyone, it's Robert, and this is another Friday New Product Post. This product post is a little special because we're going to do a little bit more hands-on demonstrations with the products. We're going to do a couple teardowns, we're going to do a little bit more explanation, so let's see what we've got for this week. So here we've got a breakout board for 10-segment bar graph LEDs. Um, we've been selling the bar graph LEDs for a little bit of time now, and we actually have a breakout. This comes in kit form, so it comes with PCB, um, three different color bar graphs. There's a red, an orange, and a green. And then it also comes with all these other little bits. You've got these um, resistor packs, which are actually a pack of, um, I think there's four or five resistors in each one of these, and a single common pin, and then, you know, a couple caps and some other random bits. So you get this all built up, and it looks like this. We've got a demo running for this to show you what it does. This does have an Arduino library, so it's really easy to use. And you can actually daisy chain up to eight of these with the Arduino library. But if you want to write your own code, you can daisy chain as many of these together as you want. So let's hook one up and see what an example looks like. And we've just got this nifty little demo running on it. So you can see, you can use this as like a VU meter, um, any kind of level indication. You can easily add another one on to the end. You can individually control each one of the 10 LED segments. Um, each of the individual LEDs on the 10 LED segments. So this gives you 30 LEDs and you can just keep adding it on. So you can make some pretty cool stuff with this. So here's something pretty exciting. At least I'm excited about it. We've got three new stepper motors for you. First off, we have this big one. This is 125 ounce per inch and it's a um, 1.8 degree per step. So that means it's about a 200 step per revolution. We've got a slightly smaller one here which is actually 58 ounce per inches, and this one has a 0.9 degree angle per step, which means that it turns 400 steps per rotation. And then we have this one. This one's pretty interesting. It's only 29 ounce per inch, but it has this threaded shaft in the middle. So when this one turns, it actually can move the shaft in and out. And this one is also a 200 step per revolution, and it takes five full revolutions to move this threaded shaft one centimeter. So there you go. So we've got these three new stepper motors and some people might be wondering why they would use a stepper motor, why they would use a servo motor, or why they just wouldn't use a normal DC motor. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually take these apart, show you what they look like, take apart some servo motors, show you what those look like, and I'll explain the differences between steppers, servos, regular DC motors, and even you know optical encoders and all the other good stuff. So let's crack apart some motors. So we get this question a lot. What type of motor do I use? If you're looking to do anything precise, you're probably going to be looking at either a stepper or a servo. And they're pretty different, so there is a lot of decisions to be made which one you want to go with. Let's start with a stepper. A stepper motor is essentially just a pretty standard DC motor, but has multiple windings on the output. And quite simply, it has detents, which means that when you send it a uh, pulse or a step, it moves one of those steps. Most of these motors have a 1.8 degree per step, which means that they move 1.8 degrees per step that you send it. That translates into about 200 steps for one full revolution. Now, the beauty of that is it's actually mechanical inside the motor. We'll take one apart so you can see exactly what's going on. So that means if you send this 200 steps, it's going to turn exactly one full revolution. It's mechanical. It's inside it. It can't do it a little bit more, a little bit less. I mean, generally speaking, it's going to turn exactly one full revolution. So if you need to go a quarter of a revolution, you could do 50 steps. And that's how you easily control how much movement you want. The downside to a stepper is it has no feedback mechanism. Therefore, if you were to hold it really strong, send it 200 steps, and it never moved, it doesn't know that it didn't move. It thinks it got the steps. There's no feedback involved with this motor. It just you know, either moves or doesn't. So if you're using this in any kind of control application, you have no way of knowing how far it moved or how far it didn't move or anything like that. The other thing about these motors that you have to keep in mind is because they don't have any positioning data, they are continuous. And for some applications, that's bad. For some applications, that's good. You can control this continuously. It just keeps spinning and spinning and spinning, and it never stops. So a servo, for instance, goes only like, let's say, 90 degrees or 180 degrees back and forth. These are continuous, and you can control the speed and the number of steps. Let's take one of these apart and see what it looks like on the inside. We're going to take apart the biggest one because, well, why not? 
You'll see with this motor that we just have four screws on the top. And we're just going to take these screws off and they lead the whole length of the chassis. So when we take these out, you can see they're actually pretty long. Now that we've got all four of the screws out, let's crack open the case and see what this looks like. So we're going to pull off this back nice and gently. And it comes right off. And you can see this is pretty well machined. We've got a little, um, just a little washer inside here that sits in the bottom. And if we look at the actual motor itself, we've got another washer here. And then here is the actual bearing assembly. And we're just going to pop this out. And here's the inside core. And as you can see, it's got these little notches all along the outside edge. And this is extremely magnetic. This is a very strong magnet that's in here. And we've also got two really solid bearings that sit along this core as well. And inside the case is where all the windings go to. And if you look inside, you can also see the detents along that. So when this motor moves and you send it step commands, it actually notches to the next notch or the next step. And that's what gives it the precise movement. So the last thing I like to add about stepper motors is how to hook them up. There's a lot of different configurations of them, but there's a real easy way to tell how to hook them up. Essentially inside you have two different coils and you're basically energizing one coil, then the other, then the other, and that's what makes the steps. So really all you need is four wires. How do you know which ones to hook up where? Well, it's really easy. Most stepper motors have four wires coming out of them. Some have six, but we'll talk about that later. If you have a motor that has four wires coming out of it, like either of these, all you're gonna do is take your meter, grab a wire, and tone it out until you get continuity with the other one, and boom, that's a coil. And then the other two will be another coil. And the nice thing is there's no polarity to worry about here. You're just gonna hook these up as the first coil, this is the second, or vice versa, it doesn't really matter. And that's all you do. So let's say you have a motor with six wires coming out of it. Well, it's basically the same thing except for these have two coils and you have a wire here and a wire there, but you also have a center tap. Now, if you're using this with a bipolar motor driver that has you know, four slots on it, all you need to do to drive the two coils is do the exact same thing, grab one of the wires and tone it out, and you'll have two others, let's say, that will have continuity with it. All you need to do is pick the ones that span, or i.e. have the highest continuity, and then from here to here should have half, here to here should have half, and from here to there should have the full resistance. So you know that these two are on the outside of the coil, and then do it again, and you'll find that, let's say, these are on the outside of the coil, and that's your four wires. The other two will be the center of the tap, and you don't even need to worry about those. So that should be an easy way to choose between a unipolar and a bipolar motor. Um, essentially, how to hook up a four wire to a four wire, how to hook up a six wire to a four wire. So now that we've seen what stepper motors look like and we know a little bit more about stepper motors, let's talk about servo motors. Now servos are what most people are a little bit more familiar with because they don't require a really specific controller. You can use them directly with an Arduino as we've got here. And this is just a standard um, you know, hobby servo motor that we carry. And as you can see, it's a relatively small form factor and it has about 180 degrees of movement. It turns 180 degrees back and forth, and it has actual physical stops on the inside. And we're gonna open this up and see what that looks like later. Now, the output shafts on these usually have these, um, you know, these knurls on them, and they have these horns or um, you know, gears or different things that actually just press fit on there, and then you have a screw that holds them in place. So these are more geared towards um, hobbyist applications, things like that. And the nice thing about them, once again, is you can drive them directly with an Arduino. So let's crack one of these open. It'll be easier to explain exactly how these work when we open it up. So we're gonna take this off. And then of course we've got four screws on the bottom. We're gonna take these out. And these are also pretty long. They run the whole length of the case. Okay, so we've got this last screw out. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna pop off this top. Now inside you see a bunch of gears and the actual motor sits 
about right here. And you can see it goes through this really complex series of gears, and then this is the final output shaft. Now if we look at the top casing, you can see really closely, you might not be able to see it in the video, we've got a sweep right here and we have two stops. These stops correspond with this little piece right here. So the motor can only go from here all the way around to about there. And that corresponds with this little track inside the case. And we've got um, you know, a little bushing there and a um, thrust bearing there. And these gears just easily kind of pop out. They're just you know, held in place by that top cap. So let's put this back on. And then we're going to take off the bottom here. If we look inside the bottom, we've got the actual motor, which is surprisingly small, and then we've got this little board. This is the electronics of the servo, and that's what tells it, that's basically the feedback system that tells it when to start and stop. And if we look inside here, we've actually got a potentiometer. I'm actually going to pull this out. So there's just one little screw holding it in place. Take out that screw. And we pulled a little bit too hard, but whatever, let's get this thing out. There we go. So inside is this little potentiometer. And typically these are a 5K pot. And what they do is they turn about the same range of freedom that the actual servo has, and it is the feedback loop. So that feedback actually tells the servo where it is in that position. It reads the value coming off the potentiometer and it tells it where in that 180 degree sweep it is. Now, there's a lot of different types of servos. There are continuous rotation servos. Basically, all they do is do away with this potentiometer so they don't have any feedback and they just keep spinning indefinitely. There's a lot of other things that you can do with the servos to modify them. You can take out these stops, you could take out that pin and it would spin indefinitely as well. You can even remove this potentiometer and make it external. So let's say you have this whole thing on a geared setup and you have let's say a 5 to 1 gear ratio. The pot is then going to spin 5 times as much or 5 times less. So if you take out the potentiometer and put it on the final output shaft, then the final output shaft will rotate 180 degrees. So there's a lot of different things you can do with a servo. The benefits to a servo are that they're really easy to use and they also have relatively precise motion and they have that feedback mechanism. So they always know exactly where they're at in their movement. They know that they're at 90, they know that they're 180, or they know that they're zero. There's always that feedback with the potentiometer. The downside is they have relatively limited range of motion. A stepper can go infinitely around as many times as it wants, but this can really only go around, um, typically 360 is about the max that you're gonna find. If you start going around multi-turns, really the tolerances the potentiometer don't get that good and it really can't place itself as well. So that is basically how a servo works. So now we've explained the difference between a stepper motor and a servo motor and um, you know essentially what they do. Um, the other thing that we need to think about too is um, power and controllers. As you could see from just opening one of these up there's a lot more going on and these definitely take a lot more power. The servo is geared, so they're typically a little bit slower, but they have a little bit more torque because of all the gearing. And because of this, they really don't require as much power, on average, to run. Something like this will maybe only draw 50 to 100 milliamps at most, whereas this big one is gonna draw a full two amps at full speed. Um, these can all usually be run about five volts or so. Um, servos typically don't go much over five volts. So that's a consideration. If you're gonna do a stepper, you typically need your own dedicated stepper controller, like an easy driver. Um, we have the um, big easy driver, and we've also got the quad stepper, which we've got over here. So you're gonna need your own driver for that, whereas any kind of servo, you can just use an Arduino. We've talked about the differences there. Now, what if you need the precision of a stepper, because steppers are a little bit more precise in their actual steps than a servo, but you don't want to go with something like a stepper for various reasons. Well, that is where you do something like this. This is actually one of the legs off of the um, Dagu Robot 5 platform, the Rover 5 platform. And what this uses is a normal DC motor with an optical encoder. So we talked about how stepper motors don't really have a feedback system. Well, what if you were gonna take a normal DC motor and add a feedback? 
That's basically what a servo is, except for it uses a potentiometer as the feedback loop. So what if we did something a little bit more reliable, like something very similar to what the stepper uses, where we have steps? Well, let's open this up and see how they do it inside here. So we're just going to take this apart and see what's exactly going on inside this. So when we crack open this casing, we're just going to see a bunch of gears. So this is geared, but the other thing that you see that's interesting is you actually see this wheel right here with different segments of white and black. And if we look on this side, we can see two little infrared sensors. And what's happening inside here is every time that wheel turns, the infrared sensors detect a difference between white and black, and they send that signal out there. This is essentially a quadratic encoder. What that tells your software is, I've turned X number of times. So if you count the number of transitions that have been made from white to black, you can say, oh, you know, there's eight transitions on there, so if I measure eight transitions, I've turned one full revolution. So that's pretty handy in just having a regular DC motor and just sending power to it and then cutting the power off when I've moved this much. And this is actually how a lot of um, higher end control automation is used, that there's some sort of optical encoder or some sort of quadratic encoder at the end of it to tell exactly how much that shaft is used. So here you've got a couple different options. You've got the good old hobby RC motor, which uses a potentiometer as the feedback with a normal DC geared motor inside this handy little package. You can go with a stepper motor, which actually has steps along it, and you can send the number of steps that you want it to turn, and you can say, I want to turn exactly one step or exactly half a step, but no feedback system. Or you can go with something like this, which is a normal DC motor coupled with an optical encoder feedback system so you can tell exactly how much it's turned. So these are a couple different options that you can use for any kind of automation or any kind of precise movement and hopefully that gives you a better idea of the difference of steppers, servos, and DC motors with um, some kind of feedback loop. So there you have it, another Friday new product post. We've got the stepper motors, we've also got the bar graph LED breakout, and hopefully we explained a little bit about the differences between steppers and servos, and hopefully that helps out some people. And as another reminder, we've got open house this Saturday, so that's gonna be awesome. Hopefully you can show up. We're gonna have a lot of different things. We're gonna have rides, all sorts of things, but unfortunately no petting zoo. So we'll see you again next week with another Friday new product post.